Um, I'm Renee Kirby. I'm the parent coordinator at Maryland School for the Blind. And today we have LaShawn Miles, um, who is the youth librarian at Maryland State, Depart Ma Maryland State Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. And there's a really easy way to say it, LBPH. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so today she's going to be here to um, discuss um, all that they do here and the different resources that they can offer um, you and your family. So I'll let you. Okay. Take it away. Well, hello, hello everyone. My name is LaShawn Miles again, and welcome to introducing the Maryland State Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. I've been here for about two years now, and since I've come on board, I must say that the leadership has changed and the mission, mission has changed. Our books have always been central to us, but now we really want to get out to the community and do programming and really touch the lives of our patrons. Though we are not a public librarian, we are a state agency, we do want to know what are your needs and what you most want from us. So today in our discussion, I would definitely like to hear um, some of your thoughts of what programs you would like to see, or uh, what services we can provide, and whatever else information I can take back to my team to make LBPH better for our patrons. So let's just dive right into it and let's find out a little bit more about what we do. So I'm going to switch to our slides. Okay. This one? Yes. And can we do slideshow from the beginning? All right. All righty. So who are we, first of all? The Maryland State Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, LBPH, is part of the Maryland State Library. And what we do is we provide services and resources to public librarians all across the state. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay, we're gonna switch back real quick. One moment. How do, how do we do that? I'm sorry. There we are. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, we're also part of the National Library Service, which is part of the Library of Congress, and it's through the tax-supported funding from the federal and state agencies that we are able to have this service. There is no direct cost to our patrons or readers, and that's the fabulous thing about LBPH. We provide free services to individuals who cannot read standard print or have a print disability. And we'll talk about how you can basically qualify for the services. Right now we have about 8,000 Maryland residents that we circulate over 200,000 materials every year, but we expect that number to grow. So, our material um, is accessible for those who have a print disability. A print disability refers to someone with a visual, physical, or learning disability. Now, this kind of is um, a questionable thing when I'm talking to families because oftentimes a parent would come to me and say, well, my child has, can they qualify? Now, there are certain criteria, and we'll talk about that criteria in just a moment, but a print disability does not mean a child who has low literacy levels or developmental disabilities. So if a child has Down syndrome, they don't automatically qualify for our services because they have Down syndrome. But I will tell you, if you believe your child does have a print disability or reading disability, there is a way to get them qualified by going to a medical professional. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So who can use our services? Our services are free, but you know, we can't give it to everyone. So there is some criteria. First of all, if a person is legally blind, that means having a vision of 2200 or less with glasses or a visual field of 20 degrees, they qualify. Those who are visually disabled, if they have a problem focusing long enough with standard print, they would qualify. If they cannot physically turn the pages of a book, such as if they have cerebral palsy or mul uh, multiple sclerosis, they would also qualify. Or they have um, manual dexterity issues, they would qualify because they physically cannot handle a book. Now, reading disabilities such as dyslexia, they can qualify as well, but they will need a competent authority such as a medical doctor to say they have a reading disability. So that's a gray area. And I always tell parents, if you believe your child would qualify because you believe their reading disability is hindering them from being able to read standard print, you have to have a medical doctor or a doctor of osteopathy 
actually certify the application. So I want to know if we can take a look at the actual application. I don't know if I can go down. So here's the actual application that we give out to um, those who would want to use our services. And on the application, as you can see, once we get past the general information, such as name, date of birth, contact, um, how you qualify, we ask you to take a look at this page here. Now, I just gave you those lists of certifying um, those criteria, but here's where the who can qualify or certify that you have a disability. So in cases of blindness, visual disability, or physical limitations, a competent authority includes a doctor of medicine, registered nurses, optometrists, professional staff of hospitals, institutions of public or private welfare agencies, such as social workers, caseworkers, counselors. In the absence of any of these, a public librarian can also certify if they know for sure that that person is, has a visual disability. But if we cannot tell if you have a disability based on just your vision or um, a physical limitation, in case, of a, uh, in case of the reading disability, from an organic dysfunction, a medical doctor has to certify this document. Can I ask something? Sure. Um, so I know that uh, when a child has uh, like a red flag in school, is, is switching letters and, and the numbers and, and has a problem with direction or whatever, that might be a red flag for dyslexia or a learning difference. And they uh, have an assessment done by the, maybe the, the related service providers okay. in the school. Mm -hmm. Would that be enough? That, that diagnosis of the specialist, would that be enough? Um, according to what I know, a medical doctor has to certify. Okay. Even, um, even if, if they have dyslexia and they have that certification or they have the documentation to say they are dyslexic, yes. But a medical doctor has to certify for all others. Okay. So they, this is a federal document, so um, a doctor would not just sign if they don't believe it's true because they know this will be, um, they will be held competent for certifying the application. Now, on the application, also they're gonna ask you what kind of equipment you would like because all of our equipment is free to our patrons as well as our books. So you can get a, a plethora of uh, books provided in different formats. So you can have audio books, braille books or magazines, large print books, or even our downloadable service. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, I know a lot of the younger kids, they prefer not to have a machine. They like to use our downloadable service because they can uh, download the material right to their own cell phone or laptops or um, devices. And so they might not want equipment. So it's up to you. You can check whatever you like, what you want us to send you. Also, we provide all the accessories for you. So if you need a pillow speaker because that person is uh, confined to a bed or a wheelchair, We'll provide that as well. Headphones come standard. Some people need a high volume player, so we can also provide that. Some people cannot use um, their hands, so we have a breath switch in which they can control the actual player through sips and puffs. So we will also provide that for you. And we also give you the actual download cord that you can plug into your computer to download from BARD and onto a device I'm sorry, I have a cold today, so I'm sorry for all this stopping <laughs> and swallowing. I'm trying to get through this. <laughs> so please bear with me, but thank you. But we give you that uh, cord where you can download from the computer to a flash drive, and then you can take that flash drive and plug it into your actual um, digital talking book player to play your books. So you would um, check off, again, what accessories you would like to be sent. Also, we have books just like our public libraries all kinds of genres. So you tell us what you prefer, what kind of books that your child would like or the patron would like. If you want us to automatically select books for you, we can do that as well. Or you can tell us, look, these are my preferences, but don't send me anything based on my preferences. We will contact you when we're ready for a book. Now, there's some exclusions you can also place on the account. Um, you want to exclude based on the age, of course, of the child or the patron, we would do exclusions for strong language, excessive violence, or explicit descriptions of sex. And um, some older adults also don't want those um, particular 
qualities in their book, so they, they will also exclude them as well. Another thing you might want to take a look at is how often you want books um, sent. We can send them each day, weekly or monthly. And some people feel like, okay, I want them a lot. And then they find out, oh, I'm not reading as much and I'm getting overwhelmed. So they'll call us and say, well, can you please just stop our service for just a moment for temporarily? Or can you dial it back a couple books? So we are here to assist you. You let us know how often and how many you want at one time. So if you only want one book sent each week, we can do that as well. So you can specify there as well on the application. Um, and the rest of the application is just basically asking how we can best contact you, if you would like to be registered for Newsline, which I'll talk about in a moment. And um, also, do you want to be part of our technology user group, which I also will discuss in a moment. So once you're done with the application, it's all certified. You can just simply send it back to us either through fax, mail, you can email it to us, and then your services will begin once we get you all set up. So now we're going to go back into our presentation here. So, so now, once you're, you're in, what can you receive from us? What can we offer you? So, first of all, again, we're big on our books, and this is why we were established, to provide accessible reading materials. So you're going to get the option of large print, braille, and audio books in digital format. Now, our Braille and our digital formats come from the National Library Service. They are already provided for us. However, our large print, we actually purchase ourselves. And I will tell you that we don't have a very extensive large print collection, especially for youth. And I would strongly recommend that you use your public libraries for large print. We have some, but we don't really refresh that, that part of the collection, excuse me, as often as we should. But Braille and digital formats are recorded through NLS and they are sent to us and they, are, they include the most popular books that are out. However, we don't get the books right away as soon as those books are released. There is a time period. We have to wait until the street release date before we can actually record the book. NLS actually has a collection development team. They look at what's popular, they look at bibliographic authorities, and they decide on what books will be recorded in, in, in accessible formats. Now, if there's a book you're looking for and you want, we can suggest it to NLS, but again, that does not mean that book is going to be recorded, but they will listen to suggestions from our patrons. Also, I want to take a swallow of water real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. I had a question mm -hmm. um, about College books. Okay. Do you, or do you have a section on that, or, or is this a good time to ask that question? Um, I do have a section, but you can go ahead and ask the question. <laughs> I just, I just didn't know. You know, you know, my, my daughter's in college right now, and some books she can't get on her app that she has on her phone. Right. Would you be able to find those books, or is that how does that work? Okay. Excellent question. Actually, we have the Maryland Accessible Textbook Program, which I'm going to talk about today. And when your child is going to higher education, they actually convert textbooks oh. free of charge for our patrons. Wow. Yes, they do. And so I'll talk to you a little bit later in the um, presentation, but Mr. Joe Beckett is who you need to contact. Okay. And if there's a book, they can get it for you. And that's one of the wonderful things we offer here from LBPH. That's awesome. Um, so, um, uh, as well as our books. Now, we don't do textbooks for um, K through 12. We do not provide textbooks. And my MRC does that. Okay, exactly. That's who I mean. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And MRC is the Maryland Resource. Instructional Resource. Yeah. Exactly. All right. And so we also have DVDs with audio description, audio and braille magazines. And we have a lot of magazines that are available um, for you and for your reading pleasure players and accessories to listen to your audio files, assistive technology training. We actually have one-on-one -on -one where you can come in and sit with an assistive technology coach to go through certain things that you want to help you lead a, lead a more independent life. Matter of fact, we're having a session. We usually have them every second Saturday of the month. They're usually here in our downtown Baltimore location, but we are starting to move across the state. So this week, actually April 13th, at 10.15 a.m. at the Greenbelt, Greenbelt Library in Greenbelt, Maryland, they're going to be talking about Siri and Siri shortcuts. 
So um, it will be a 90 minute presentation. And any other tech issues and questions can also be addressed at that time. It's a great time to come in to learn about some great technology. It's not just for older patrons, the youth are invited as well. So that's something also to consider. Now our magazine and periodicals are produced in a variety of formats, but not every magazine comes in all formats. So some may be in large print, some may be in press braille, some in digital audio, and some are only download only. So when you look at the magazines off of the NLS website, if you go to nls.loc.gov, it'll give you a whole list of the magazines and the formats they come in and how often you can receive them as well. Okay. Oh, I forgot to add, mention NFB Newsline. So NFB Newsline is also provided for our patrons free again. It's a free audio news service for anyone who's blind, low vision, or have a print disability. It has over 500 publications. You can check on the weather. Well, we can do that on our cell phone as well, but just in case. Um, job listings are also posted there. You can um, actually go into Newsline and look at what's on sale at Target. They have store circulars. So it's a wonderful resource. And with your, um, um, your new services here, you also can apply for BARD. BARD is our Braille and audio reading download service. And I tell you, a lot of people enjoy that because the books are instantaneous. Once you download it, that book is yours to keep. <clears throat> that file never expires. It's always there for your use. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in just a moment. So again, we're known for our digital audio books, our Braille books. We have one of the largest collections in the countries. In the country, I'm sorry, you're gonna receive our digital player. You can request a high volume player. We have over 3,700 digital books are produced each year by NLS. We have our own recording studio right here in our downtown, downtown Baltimore location. We only um, record books by Maryland authors or books about Maryland and then we upload them to BART. So we actually have our own studio as well. And actually there is one talking book service at least in every state. So if you or your child moves out of the state, their services can still continue. We just transfer the account to that particular state, wherever you go. Nice. Um, all of our services, anything that we send you is through the US mail and it's all free. So we, we can send out books to you in cartridges if you prefer you would have a, a, it's a little case and on that case is a card. And once you finish reading that book, you flip the card over, stick it back into the case and send it back to us in the mail. Simple, easy peasy, no problems at all. And that's a, one of the, the things about our service is that it's free, we get it to you, you get it back to us, no problem at all. All right, you can also reach us by internet. We have a reference desk each day from eight to five, eight to four, I'm sorry. You can call in, um, request books, tweak your account, get information, make appointments with our technology coach. Whatever it is that you need from us, you can, you can call us, sorry, and get that information. You can also reach us all through the email, which is reference.desk at maryland.gov. Okay. Now I wanted to go through this chart um, because to me, I always say that in order to play a good game of life, you gotta have a great hand of resources. And some people say, well, I have Bookshare and I have Learning Ally, why do we need you? And I say, why not just have one other thing in your plethora of resources to provide for your child? Why not have us? So this chart actually shows how we compare to Bookshare and Learning Ally. Now, we don't, again, provide textbooks, whereas Bookshare Learn Learning Ally, they do. I want to take a swig of water one moment. Excuse me. Okay. We offer magazines as well as Bookshare. Learning Ally does not. We always have a professional narrator. We always um, audition our narrator, so you're not going to get a digitized voice. These are humans. With, um, who are gonna give you a great reading experience. Bookshare does not use human voices and Learning Ally does. They do have volunteers that record for them. We never charge.
for any of our books or equipment. However, Bookshare and Learning Ally, once your child gets to a certain age or out of higher education, the fees start coming on. You have to pay for their service. So why not have a service that will continue with, with your child, not based on their age? So once they become a member, they're always a member of LBPH or the National Library Service. You do not need a computer in order to utilize our material. When you receive our player and you receive a cartridge, that player has 29 hours already given of power when we deliver it to you. You can take it right out the box and plug in a book and start reading right away. And you don't have to plug that device up every day. However, Bookshare Learning Ally will always need a computer if necessary for their services. You can download our books and all three of us all compare with that. We do have books, uh, we do allow people with reading disabilities to use our service as well as Bookshare and Learning Ally. We have Braille books provided and Braille magazines. And you also can download Braille books from us as well. And Bookshare, you can do the same, but not with Learning Ally. So again, um, no computers necessary, all equipment free, professionally recorded, able to download files. They never expire. Books available in accessible formats. I think it's a win-win. I think you should Sounds always... Definitely. Yeah, you should always have as many resources as possible at your fingertips. All right, so now uh, let's take a look at um, some of the equipment that you're going to receive. So we have two different players. It's the digital talking book player. Uh, based on the person's age, we usually give them the standard player. It has less buttons. It's not as fussy to um, work with. Again, it's very simple and easy to use. It comes right out of the box ready. Every button has an audio descriptor. So if there's no book inside, if you press that button, it's gonna tell you what that, the function of that book, or I'm sorry, of that particular button. So if you're not sure, you could just click on the button. They'll tell you, oh, this is the play button, or this is the stop button. It even tells you how much power you have left on the battery. It has a sleep function bu button. So if you like to listen to your books while you sleep, you can set it in 15 minute increments to turn off. And it's simple, rewind, fast forward. That's awesome. Yes. Now our advanced player um, actually has more controls on it because some people would like to have that finer navigation. And so if you're reading a magazine and you wanna skip from article to article, it's good to have an advanced player. Um, I know like some of our patrons who have the Bible, they want to uh, be able to read from you know, chapter to verse. And so you need that navigational um, ability to skip through from verse to verse or chapter to chapter. And so that advanced player is gonna give you those features in order to do that. If you have several books and magazines on one cartridge, if you hold down that play button, it takes you to a bookshelf mode and then you can skip from book to book on that one cartridge. So it's very easy to use. And there's also a user guide inside actually um, available on the player. So if you hold down the play stop button, excuse me, you actually can get into the user guide and they'll give you more instructions on how to use it. We have a lot of resources on our website about using it. And you can also Google um, NLS digital talking book player. And there are lots of manuals out there that can help you with what are the features of the talking book. Okay. Well, not sure if we have any questions. So we'll get to any questions in just a moment. Um, but please let us know if there's something you need clarity on. Now, we also can um, link to other third-party players. So if you prefer to purchase your own player, one that's very popular is the Humanware Victor Reader Stream. That Humanware Victor Reader Stream, um, when you go into BARD and you go into your settings, you can actually link your Victor Reader Stream to your NLS book player. And so you will need a particular key. And so just go into your settings and tell it, um, you have to notify that you want it to link to your Victor Stream. And then there's a key sent from Victor Stream to you that allows you to link those. And so you can play that, play our books right onto those devices. Plex Talk and BookSense, I'm not very familiar with them, but again, they are examples of other third party players that will play our books. Now, one of the things about our books is that once you download the file of our book, people say, oh, once I have it on a flash drive, I can play it on any device, right? No, it's actually encrypted. Mm. 
So um, only particular devices can play our books. And that's why we're allowed to copy as many books as possible for our patrons because um, we know they're encrypted and a copyright, that copyright thing doesn't apply to us. And so only our particular equipment can play our particular books. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about BARD. I like BARD and I always tell people it's good to have, um, but again, you will need a high um, speed internet and you'll need a computer um, or you need a device. So with that, BARD is the online service that provides you with thousands of specially format books, magazines, and music materials. Now, BARD gives you more books. And I know a lot of parents call me and say, well, do you have certain books in this format? And I said, no, we don't have it in a Braille book, but we don't have it on a cartridge, but we have it on BARD. So if you have BARD, you have access to a lot more. So books can be played on your NLS player by downloading it on, from the computer onto a flash drive and then plugging that flash drive into your player. You can download BARD using our BARD mobile app on your phone or tablet. And then once you have the app, you could go in and download um, books. You can, you can search BARD for what you're looking for. And let's take a look at actually how it looks on each device. So the iOS is a little different than the Android. It looks just like our player. As you can see, the Android app has the same features as the player, the play stop button, fast forward online, and you would go to bookshelf to find the books that you have already downloaded. Get books will take you into actually bar where you can download more books. And I always tell people to download, excuse me, download when you have a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, because it will take a lot of um, streaming space for you. On the iOS, um, again, you can download your audiobooks, magazines, you can download Braille formats to play on a refreshable Braille display, Braille magazines, and you can also browse BART. So this is how it actually looks on a cell phone when you're using the particular BART mobile app. And I wanted to show you real quick what BART looks like. If I can get to it on this screen, here it is. So once you get in, um, you'll need a password. And again, once you do the application, you can just simply say, I would like access to BART and we'll see the directions on how to get in. Or you can always just call us, let us know when you would like to have BART. Um, and we can talk you through how to get to it. But basically you can search the collection by author, title, um, genre. You can find music books and scores here as well through NLS. Magazines, if you wanna find all the different magazines, it'll tell you what format they're in. So that will also be um, available there on that website link. It'll tell you all the books you've downloaded, um, books you wanna put on your wish list, just to hold for future reading, and some other great links there, like BART Mobile for Kindle. It'll give you some instructions on how to do that as well. So this is actually what BART looks like, and this is um, basically how you can access it. All right, so let's talk about another way to access our books, and that's through our online catalog. Now, if you take a look at the address here, webopac.clause.com, forward slash md1aopac forward slash. That takes you to this link. There's a quicker way to get here too if you don't remember this Remember this site. If you go to Maryland, marylandlibraries.org, um, you can go right into our page and on the side of our page, it will give you access to our application, the catalog and to bar. So you can just click and it'll get, get you here the same way. Um, so on the OPAC, you can actually sign in to request and view status of books. So you can ask for a sign-in um, login. It's usually your patron ID and the four-digit year of birth. And that will get you in. And once you get in, you can search for any kind of book. You can see what's available. And then you can order the book right through the online catalog. You don't even have to contact us. You can get it right through the OPAC. Any information about programs and services will also be posted here. And if you have any questions on actually how to use it, you can actually go to this link here, which takes you to a PDF of a guide on how to use the online catalog and how to download. 
So this is another great resource on how to request and look at the status of your books. All right, any questions, Renee? No, I'm just taking it all in. Okay, <laughs> it's great information. Okay, I don't, I don't know if we have anybody participating right now, but I mean, this will be archived. So okay, yeah, it will be, great. Hopefully, be used by multiples of people. And I'm so sorry, I, my voice is not great today, but I'm doing my best. So. Everybody has. <laughs> All right, so uh, you were talking about those textbooks and that textbook program. So this is the MAC program, the Maryland Accessible Textbook Program. Again, they will convert books in accessible formats for you into MP3, large print, and PDF. They do not provide Braille books at this time. Um, there are some criteria as to how you can get your books converted. The best thing to do is to contact Mr. Joe Beckett, and you can contact us here at our, our number, 410-230-4444. And you can ask for him and talk to his team, and they will guide you through on how to actually get books converted for your child. Right now, we service, we're servicing about 111 students or more. That was for 2017, 2018, and we've converted over 328 books. Wow. Now, here are some programs that we've had here at um, LBPH. Just keeping my eye on the time. Currently, we are working with Future Makers to do a, an accessible STEAM program all across um, rural counties in Maryland. And this program started in April, right now in your public libraries. You will have these wonderful activities, such as Wigglebots, Straw Structure City, where they create all these uh, uh, um, structures out of straws. Um, there's the beeping circuits, kinetic creatures, and sound boxes, all made um, or modified for those with visual impairments. So it's just not for people who are visually impaired, it's for all children, but we modify the program so that children who are visually impaired can also take part in it. And we train librarians in five different regions on the Eastern Shore, Western Maryland, Frederick County, Cecil County, and Southern Maryland on this accessible wow. curriculum. So please check out your public libraries. We've posted them, we've um, sent them out on listservs, and please attend. Um, we're looking for participation. So what if what if I go to my public library and I and they're not participating? Could could I could I write could I write to you or could I call you and say, hey, you know, I see that you know not only my child has a visual impairment, but there's at least four other kids in my area that do. And mm -hmm. yeah. That's a great idea. And I think also letting the library staff know at the public library that you want more accessible programming is important because they know we exist, but they also need to know that partnering with us and providing those programs for their community is important as well. So letting me know and letting the public librarians know will, will garner more interest for programming and accessibility. I think it's great that the public librarians know. Um, I know for a fact that some of the school librarians do not know about you. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's, it was very shocking to me because I, I actually got a phone call from um, one of the, the schools in my, my county. Right. And they said, where can, um, where can the student find braille books access, accessible for them or, or audio books? And I was shocked that they, the librarian, the TVI knew. But right. The librarian did not. Know. There was no communication there. So I don't know if she was just new or just wasn't aware. So I did pass that information along and mm -hmm. hopefully um, word gets out. But that's why I contacted you. It was the beginning of it. <laughs> and I, I totally agree because I was also a school librarian before I came here and I didn't know about this program. Okay. And so that was one of my goals when I got here was to really reach out to TVIs, to school systems, public librarians, to let them know about what we do and how we can assist. So that's excellent that you brought that out. It's great communication. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a program in our public libraries that's um, through the Maryland State Library and LBPH called NASA at My Library. Um, this is a program where NASA is providing these kits which provide all of these different activities on the sun, moon, and earth. Also on being a NASA detective, there's lots of hands-on exploratory type activities. And what LBPH did is take the actual kit and made it accessible to those who are visually impaired. So we're actually training public librarians on the curriculum and telling them about the resources and how they can make it more accessible. 
and they're holding these programs in their libraries throughout the year. So if you see a NASA at my library program, please attend because it is, it has been modified for those who are visually impaired. We actually pr provided um, tactile books about different topics um, around the lunar craters and the sun and the moon. We provide an accessible science kit on astronomy. So there are overlays and there are tactile graphics. So a lot of the things have been modified and they are now in public libraries and they're doing programs around this NASA at my library. That's awesome. Yes. And of course, you know, this year's Apollo's 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things are going on with um, the, the astronomy and NASA for this year. Not only that, the summer reading this year um, starts here at LBPH from June to August. And it's again around the theme of, of space. So the theme is Universe of Stories. Last year, we had about 72 participants. We want more participants reading because we had some great prizes. We sent kids to iFly. We go to the Baltimore Orioles game. Um, we went to the Maryland Science Center. There's just a bunch of activities and uh, prizes that we give out. And we use um, Beanstack, and they've been really working with us to provide an accessible platform for people to record their books throughout the summer and their reading. And so um, you'll start seeing advertising about our summer reading program. And I always tell kids, you can participate here as well as your public library. So don't just think you have to participate here. You can do both and get all the prizes from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great thing just to look forward to for the summer. All right, and we're, we're also looking for other ideas for programming and services. So if there's something in mind that, again, that you think will be great for LBPH to start or try to uh, do with families, please let me know. I'm looking for more ideas and ways to get into the community. Now, there's some other additional resources for you. If you want other Braille books um, for your child, American Printing House for the Blind, they provide a lot for children for five and under. You can actually get six free print Braille books per year up until the child's sixth birthday. And you can visit them at um, aph.org to find more information about that. Also, the American Action Fund provides one book a month for younger children, grades K through two, and one book every other month for older kids, grades three to six. And again, that contact is um, on this page, actionfund.org forward slash free I think that's a hyphen braille hyphen books. And Seedlands is another one, I'm sorry. Um, you can get a lot of braille book, print braille books as well on seedlands.org. Um, they offer three free braille books per year. So those are some other resources to look at. Um, I like Great Expectations as well. They have picture books um, that use multi-sensory approach through songs, tactile play, picture descriptions, body movement, um, again, a wonderful resource for you. I don't so you know can, about this one. Yeah, so you can visit them at www.nbp.org. And again, excellent resource. LBPH also has literacy kits. We started a few of them last year. And in these literacy kits, there is around a central theme. So we have the very hungry caterpillar, if you give a mouse a cookie, and the concept of farm. And inside, we provide accessible book formats. We provide games, activities the families can do together. And you can loan, we can rent these out, not rent, I'm sorry, loan them out to you uh, for a certain amount of time where your family can engage with the kit. There are actual plush items inside the kit as well. And then you can return them and get another one. So um, that's another resource if you're interested in some family engagement in early literacy. So um, that's basically LBPH and what I've been doing here as a youth librarian. But if you have any questions now, please, I would love to answer any questions you may have. So I'm not sure if we can check to see if anyone's in the chat. Let's see, I think it will be popping up. Uh, Oh, there it is, the chat, yep. Okay, well, 
don't say anything in the chat. I don't see anything. <laughs> I, I haven't seen anybody sign on because um, it don't it would tell us. But okay, no one signed. I on. I have a question. Okay. I would love to get this uh, this PowerPoint that you did. Is there a way that I could I could get that? You yes, can send that to me. You certainly um, can because I think it would be a great resource. Um, and and I know that Lashawn and I I just met Lashawn this year and we are talking about collaborating. So um, I I am aware that. Our location, Maryland School for the Blind's location, is is not really accessible and easy to get to for a lot of our mm -hmm. uh, people across the state. So I have really um, thought about, and and I've done some some regional workshops and stuff like that. So I know that you're you've been talking about that as well, and mm -hmm. um, going into different areas. If you have an area, uh, if you live in an area that you feel would would um, you know, you'd like to see us come to, <laughs> um, please please let either one of us know. Yes. And, and um, we're talking about we're, some other um, ideas of, of how to collaborate uh, for, for our families in the state. So if you have any ideas or if you're from an area that you really feel would benefit um, from our services, please contact either uh, me or LaShawn. Um, and uh, you can always call the school or, or call uh, the library and to find either one of us. Yep. So. And I just placed my con uh, contact for the library on um, the screen. Again, um, remember we have that reference desk that you can also send questions to or call um, throughout the day. Uh, we are open every second Saturday of the month from 10 to 2. So if you want to come on down, you're more than welcome to. And don't forget, um, we are also on social media. So you can follow us on our Facebook page or on Twitter as well. Awesome. Okay. All right. This is awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. And um... Hopefully we'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone.